Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Well, this year's edition of the Lloyd X Fair is just over a month away. Jace Mackey has more on some of the changes being made to this annual summer tradition. All right, I'm joined today here on Primetime Local News by Jackie Tomeyer, the general manager mm -hmm. of the Lloyd X. Thanks for coming in today, Jackie. Thank you for having me. So we're here talking about uh, the Lloyd X Fair. It's coming back to Lloydminster mm -hmm. July 12th to the 15th. Always an exciting time. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an opportunity, first of all, to kind of just uh, share with us a little bit about what people can expect from this year's edition of the fair. Yeah, so the theme of this year's fair is times are changing. And uh, that is a lot of our fair has changed uh, some components to it. Mm -hmm. We have our standard midway is always back. Um, we've changed up the entertainment a little bit. Um, we've gone to one standalone concert on the Friday night and that's Tom Cochran. So that was a big announcement we did a few weeks ago. Um, we have a uh, yard thrill show is gonna be pig races this year. So mm -hmm. that'll be fun. We have our kids stage outside for some kids entertainment and that'll be filled with some local entertainment plus um, some out of town entertainment. Um, we have the ag shows, right? We have the heavy horses coming. We have a beef pen show. Our sheep show is always really popular. Um, so a lot of those things are the same. Um, with a few new classes or a few little twists on them, we uh, really challenged our committees to come up with something new for their show mm -hmm. so that uh, when people come, they're like, hey, we haven't seen that before. Uh, Running of the Bulls is back, yeah. so that's on Saturday, and we've expanded that show. We're going to do wild pony races okay. and uh, what's called a calf scramble. So, so that's going to be a little bit of components for the kids to participate in, and uh, then we'll do the Running of the Bulls and see how many how many contestants we can we can talk into it this year. And uh, yeah, we're we're gonna, you know, we're gonna just just have a ton of fun over four days and lots of entertainment, and it'll be a good time. Uh, keeping the classics and then just kind of making some tweaks to mm -hmm. uh, make things fresh it mm -hmm. seems like the local storefront that's something I've also seen that's going to be taking place this year mm -hmm. something a little new can you talk us through what that's yeah we have? wanted to we wanted to to create a space where local regional products could be displayed um, you know we get anywhere from 35 to 40,000 people through our fair so what better place than to highlight all of the great things we have in our region um, so we're gonna have a bit of a store there mm -hmm. where people can can bring their wares and they don't they don't necessarily have to man it they can certainly be there to promote their products but um, we'll take care of selling the products for okay. them so they don't have to commit to the four days right we just want to highlight some of our great products that we have in our region because we have really great entrepreneurs here um, and that'll be in our country lane area where the petting zoo and some egg activities for the kids are and uh, yeah that's going to be that's going to be great we have a birds of prey show coming so we have live raptors and owls and that sort of thing that's that exciting. that people can get get up close uh, our creative competition so anyone that is crafty and you know, sewing, painting, baking. Um, you know, your own Heather Clagus always uh, enters her brownies. So nice. um, we have that competition as well. So in the lounge, we have a hypnotist. Um, you know, for gate admission, it's a pretty good deal for all of the entertainment and all of the things you can see and do at the fair. It definitely seems like there's a nice wide variety, mm -hmm. something for people of all ages. Now you mentioned the concert, uh, Tom Cochran coming on that Friday mm -hmm. night, that one big concert. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the decision to go for just one uh, big concert and then maybe talk a little bit about uh, how ticketing for that will work? Yeah, we we hear every year that, that why can't you bring in the big acts? Why mm -hmm. can't you bring in the big acts? So we decided to, we, we only have so much budget money to go around, so we decided to, to pool our budget, our entertainment budget, and see if, if bringing one big act would be, if people would like that. Um, so again, we're just trying something new. You know, m we might go back to four grandstand shows next year, I don't know, but uh, Tom Cochran tickets are selling really, really well. So um, I predict a sold out show, and you know, next year maybe we'll bring somebody else in or bigger, you mm -hmm. know, I, you know, we'll, we'll just see how it, how it plays out. But, but the, the board of the exhibition really wanted to try this and, and see, see what would happen. And, and then when we bring it inside, we don't have any weather issues. That's we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to have our concert. Um, at the same time as our fair is the NACC, the North American Check Wagon Championships. So we kind of also just wanted to stay away from the track and, and not put any concerts out there and really let them highlight their event. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it logistically to, to bring the stage in and out of the, the track surfacing and, and that sort of thing. Um, we just wanted to, to let them highlight their, 
their chuck wagon and, and support them on that. So yeah, we're going to try it for one year and see, see what the feedback is and see how it goes. And I was going to ask about the NACC as well, because mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty recent that uh, it's been going on at the same time or that it's even been you know, happening in mm -hmm. general, but happening here in the way that during the fair. So talk about that partnership, because it really seems like it's uh, the best of both worlds in a way. Yeah, and this year we, we really heard the feedback last year. So this year, um, you know, your NACC ticket after 5 p.m., will get you through the fair gates at no charge. Okay. So then you can just go to the wagons. Um, we really heard from our Chuck Wagon fans and, and um, you know, we made, made adjustments that way. So um, yeah, we're, we're, will it, we're super happy to just support that event as, as much as we can. And the wagon fans, they're diehard fans and, and mm -hmm. they have a lot of passion for it. So, so let's fill the, the grandstand for last year's dash at the NACC was the, the most amazing dash I've ever seen. They were nose to nose. Um, so I predict that as well. You know, there's going to be a ton of great drivers here for that for that 10 days. Yeah, it's going to be, you don't want to miss any of those yeah. races. And uh, something else that I think people won't want to miss is the parade. It's back again yeah. this year. The route's slightly different though, just because of construction yeah. in the core here. Yeah, because they're doing, you know, that, that great downtown project. So they, yeah. had to, they had to alter the route a little bit. But yes, the parade last year, I think we had you know, anywhere from 70 to 80 floats and, and, and we're hoping to, to get at least that many or more. So, so yeah, parade entries are open on our website. So get your float in and uh, it's going to be great. Uh, another big change to the fairs, we're going to, we're going to position the fair at the front of the buildings now on the pavement. Oh, okay. So it's not going to be in the midway parking lot is what we used to call it. Yeah. So that'll be parking now. So we're going to wrap our building with the fair. Um, yeah. So we're hoping that, um, you know, if it happens to rain, knock on wood, it doesn't, but if mm -hmm. it rains, uh, it'll dry out quicker and it won't kind of get muddy. So, and uh, yeah, we, we think it's going to be a good, a good move. Yeah, it's exciting. I know every year people are excited for the fair, but it seems yeah. like there's a lot of change. So hopefully uh, yeah. all of those tweaks, people are uh, excited with them. Yeah. You were telling me also next week, I think Wednesday, there's going to be a job fair as well. Do you want to uh, plug yeah. in a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Wednesday from five to seven, we're going to have a job fair. So um, you just have to come down, fill out the application. Um, you know, you can highlight kind of what you want to do, whether ticket scanning, ticket taking, mm -hmm. selling, um, janitorial, um, those, all those things. Uh, so yeah, we encourage anyone who's, who's got some time in the summer to come work a shift at the fair uh, or two, and uh, it's, it's pretty p fun four days. Um, ticket sales, we will do a, we're going to do a, a pre-sale admission down at the mall. The mall's going to be generous and let us sell our tickets down there. So that will be at a bit of a discount. Okay. So if you want to have a little bit of savings, um, you know, head down to the mall June 28th. Those tickets go on sale and uh, you get your pre, pre-admission tickets and, and you can save a little bit of money. All right, mark that on your calendars. <laughs> Jackie, <laughs> thank you so much for coming in to talk with us today. Very excited yep. for the fair as always and it's always great to talk with you. Thanks, Jace. The Holy Rosary High School eSports team recently had their playoffs end and held an event to celebrate their first season. I had a chance to find out some more. In the relatively new Innovation Lab, the Holy Rosary eSports team joined their fellow teachers and even some other members of the community to battle in various video games. Okay, so this is our wind up for our eSports team and it's kind of just a celebration of how our season went. This is our first year having eSports and it's, it's a really great way um, for our students um, to showcase everything that they learned through the season. So they're playing against different community members, different teachers, some past teachers, past students, and uh, they're pretty excited to show off what they learned this year. The very first season for the eSports team at Holy Rosary was considered a success by the teachers. So we had a few teams make our playoffs this year. Uh, we had our Rocket League team go about the farthest. They went to the quarterfinals and unfortunately lost out. But I think the success that we built within our first year of having eSports, having almost all of our teams except for maybe one or two not make playoffs, I think is a good foundation for us to build on for years to come. And even our very own got to join in on some of the fun. Oh, Callan Dunlop, Primetime, Local News. It's now time for the weather. Here's our Mario Kart phenom, Shelby Clark. Thank you so much, Mr. Callan Dunlop, for that. Kind of wish you uh, chose uh, the shots me in first place, but that's fine. 
I'll have proof later of that. <laughs> uh, now taking a first look at your weather forecast here in the border city for our Thursday. We are just sitting at 21. So um, not too bad of a temperature for this day, I'd say for this week. You know, we have we did see a scorcher yesterday, so hopefully everybody enjoyed that. We had a high chance of some storming uh, for yesterday, but it didn't seem to quite hit. So we are seeing a more cloudier day today just at 21, and we haven't been seeing uh, too much warmer conditions for today. So it's kind of been a nice cool down day, and it probably will be warming up just in time for our weekend. Uh, switching over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, most spots are actually slightly cooler than what we're sitting at here in the border city. They're all at those teen temperatures now. Uh, most are just sitting between 17 to 19, uh, 19 degrees on our Alberta side for most of these areas. And then we have a few that are slightly cooler. Uh, 15 for both Lac La Biche and Edmonton. And then Vagreville seems to be looking at the coolest condition there at 14. So we have cooled down quite a bit from what we have been seeing throughout the week. Going over to our Saskatchewan side, they are matching with us a little bit off for those temperatures compared to our Alberta side. Most are just seeing between uh, 17 to 19 degrees as well. And then we have that 120 degree mark there in Green Lake as they are seeing probably the nicest condition on our Saskatchewan side. North Balford is just sitting at 18 and they will be cooling down just to the low of 15. So not cooling down by too much. We will probably be seeing the warmest uh, evening lows yet for tonight. So 15 expected for their evening low in uh, North Battleford. They will be expecting a couple of showers later on in the evening, which will be nice. And then for their Friday, 25 is their daytime high. So warming up quite a bit from what they're just sitting at today and expecting more uh, gloomier conditions, though. They won't be seeing too much sun. For tonight for Cold Lake, they'll be looking at those double digits as well with a low of 13. Expecting a few periods of some showers later on in the evening and throughout the night. So hopefully they will be seeing uh, tons of rainfall because we all know it's very much well needed with these dry conditions. Then for their Friday, a daytime high of 24 degrees. So looking at a nice uh, temperature for sure and a mixture of some sun and clouds. So a beautiful Friday expected for Cold Lake indeed as they head off into the weekend. And then for us here in the border city, we also will be looking at that low of 13 for tonight. So we have those double digits coming ahead. So we are expecting a pretty warm evening throughout the evening tonight. So please make sure if you got some AC, make sure to use it uh, because I feel like it's going to be quite warm. And then we are supposed to be expecting a passing shower to this evening, but we shall see if it might uh, switch up on us. But hopefully we will be getting some precipitation later on in the evening. So make sure to watch out for that. And then for our Friday, we'll be looking at 23 for our daytime high, and we have a high chance, around a 85% chance of some showers later on through the afternoon for tomorrow. So that will be nice to have some wet conditions as we head into our weekend. And 23 is a nice temperature, so it's slightly warmer than what we're just sitting at for today. And now ending off with a look at some of your uh, weather photo submissions. Thank you to everyone. I have a couple of mine that we got at Bud Miller Park, which is always a fun time. The first one here is from Darcy. Thank you for this gorgeous, gorgeous shot. You said you took this after one of the evenings that we had some rain earlier on this week. So I love to see those colors in the sky. Absolutely gorgeous. And here are a couple of some cute <laughs> geese out there. Jace is smiling. We loved it. Some cute Bud Miller shots here. So thank you everybody for your submissions. And that's all I have for now for a first look at your weather forecast. When we come back, we'll have your business report from BNN. Stay tuned. U-22 Midwest Prairie Pirates started their inaugural season this past weekend. Our Thomas Wildman has more. The Prairie Pirates, alongside three other teams, started up the Baseball Alberta Junior League for players under the age of 22. The team's main goal to be a local club for young college ball players to play during the offseason. I've now graduated from the 18U coaching position to the 22U because we've now developed enough college players that are, are returning or, or college capability that are returning to play and we decided it would be a good idea to have a, a place for them to play at home as opposed to returning from college for the summer and then having to uh, leave home again to go play somewhere else. All the players are very excited to be back in Lloyd to play for the Pirates once again and to play for Herbach South and continue to develop their ball careers. I always felt comfortable having Josh as a coach. He's really understood the player that I am, how I like to play the game, the intensity I like to play with, emotions and all that sort of thing. And he's sort of helped me find, you know, like helped me get back to more fundamental things that I seem to forget when I leave. And then it's always nice to come back to him and have him remind me what I'm doing. The Pirates had their first two games this past weekend, and while they were a bit rusty in the first game, 
They gained form in the second, and Herbeck South is excited for the team's future and continuing to develop these young players. A lot of it will be individual goals that we try and meld into a collective goal for ourselves. And, and if we're all meeting our, our individual goals that these guys need to do to, to excel in college, then I think we'll have a pretty successful season here. Thomas Wildman, Primetime, Local News. It's time now for more weather. Here is our Shelby Clark. Thank you so much again there, Mr. Callan Dunlop. Yes, now taking an extended look at your weather forecast. We'll be starting off with our central zone of the provinces. We have cooled down quite a bit for what we have been seeing for these temperatures throughout the week. We were seeing well past that 20 degree mark, you know, even getting closer to that 30 degree mark in some of these areas. Now for right now, um, for most of these spots, they're actually even see, sitting at those single digits with 8 degrees in both Edson and Rocky Mountain House. And then we start to slightly warm up from there as we get more into the teens. Uh, 10 degrees for Red Deer, while it's 15 in both Edmonton and over in Jasper. And then we have 16 up in White Court, 19 for both Cold Lake and Athabasca. So we start to slightly warm up as we go a bit higher up. Now going over to our Saskatchewan side in our central zone, they are looking a lot warmer compared to our Alberta side. We have some that are just sitting at those teens with 16, 18 in North Balfour and Meadow Lake still. And then we definitely start to warm up, even getting closer to that 30 degree mark. Uh, 24, 25 for Saskatoon and Prince Albert. And then we have 27 there in Melford as they are looking at the warmest condition. And going over to our northern zone, uh, they are matching with us with these temperatures, I would say, as we have cooled down and we're kind of seeing between, you know, 17 to just past that 20 degree mark. Seems to be the most common pattern. Uh, 21 is the warmest on this side with Stony Rapids. Uh, we have a few just sitting at 18, 19, and then we have 20 degrees for both Lalosh and Buffalo Narrows, and then 16 in Wollaston Lake as they are looking slightly cooler as they've cooled down quite a bit compared to what they have been seeing throughout the week. Uh, going back over to Alberta side here in our northern zone, they are matching with us more in our central area, but they have some areas that are slightly warmer just by a couple degrees. Uh, 20 in high level, while there's 22 for both Fort McMurray and Fort Chippewan, and then the rest are just sitting at 18 as these three spots are looking slightly cooler compared to the rest here. And going over to our southern zone, surprisingly, they are actually looking slightly cooler. They're matching with us more in our central zone as they are just just seeing those mid-teens, uh, Calgary's just hitting those double digits at 10, so they are seeing the slightly cooler temperatures. 14 coordination, while well, it's 15 for both Banff and Lethbridge, Medicine Hat is still looking quite warm as they are seeing the nicest condition on that side with 22 degrees. And ending off with looking at our Saskatchewan side in our cent uh, southern zone, sorry. They are looking at the warmest conditions, I would say, as we have been looking in our central and our northern zones, as most spots are well past that 20 degree mark and even getting closer to that 30 degree mark. Um, Moose Jaw seems to be looking at the coolest temperature just at 19. Then we have 21 for both Swift Current and Kindersley. And we go a bit farther past, we are start to warm up from there. Uh, 25, 26 for Yorkton and Regina and over in Estevan, 29, so just under that 30 degree mark. So some are actually still seeing some scorchers for today while the rest have cooled down quite a bit. But now as we look at some overnight evening lows, what we can expect for tonight, they don't really look like evening lows at this point because we will be looking at those double digits and some are even getting around 15, 16 expected for their lows tonight. Uh, Isla Cross will be expecting that low of 16, while Paradise Hill and Meadow Lake will be expecting a low of 15. And then Provost and Bonneville expecting a low of 12 to 13 degrees for tonight. So probably our warmest evening yet for our temperatures in our surrounding area. And which is nice to see, most are expecting around an 80% chance of some showers later on in the evening and throughout the night. So that will be great. Hopefully we will be getting lots of rain in our surrounding area because we all know we very much need it. We're looking at our hourly forecast for our Friday here in the border cities. We kind of start off our weekend. We will be seeing those double digits and looking at a not too bad of a daytime high, 22 degrees. So we'll be kind of matching with us with what we saw today, hitting around 22 to 23 because we won't be cooling down by too much. Because as we go past Friday, we will be looking at 21, 25 for Saturday and Sunday. And I think we're all pretty excited to see that we have high chances of some rainfall and even some storming on Saturday. So I think we're all going to love to see 
see it get some wet conditions here in the border city and if we go past that into next week we are definitely going to be moving more into some summer temperatures monday we will be looking at some hopefully more precipitation at 27 cooling down next tuesday slightly and then we'll be warming it right back up next wednesday and thursday and that's all i have for now our cal and don will have more news coming up after the break Happy to be joined here today by Rhea Ann Holine, the superintendent of the Buffalo Trail Public School Division. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Abby. It's nice to meet you. Of course. Now, this is a very exciting conversation that we're about to have because the Wainwright Elementary School has received funding. Tell me a little bit about what that funding is and why the decision was made to give it to this specific school. Absolutely. So there is a, a wave of excitement in Buffalo Trail Public Schools. We have approval for design funding for our elementary school here in Wainwright. So our K-6 to students in the future will have a brand new school. Design funding is the first step of ensuring we get a brand new school in Wainwright. So we'll be able to meet with our staff, our students, our community, our parents, and have some discussions about what they would like to see that innovative learning space to be. And that's what our approval for design funding will be next year is to decide what our new school will look like. So when you say design funding, does that mean the school is gonna be taken down completely and start from new, or will it just be some interior and exterior fix up and maybe add some things as well? Yeah, great question. So this will be a brand spanking new school, a new build. It will be at the east side of Wainwright. There's an empty lot right uh, waiting there for us to all move in and the school that's currently on Wainwright will eventually uh, be no more. We don't have plans yet for what that will be, but our new school in Wainwright will be a new brand new build. And where did the decision come from to give the funding to this Wainwright school or what, how does the process work when you're deciding, okay, which school needs funding and what kind of funding uh, we're going to give them? Yeah, so this funding comes from Alberta government, from infrastructure, and it has been the board's capital plan for over a decade. There are some infrastructure, infrastructure issues with the school, so the board has been advocating for a new school here for a long time. Um, so past and present board, thank you very much for your advocacy. We met a few times with our MLA as well, who was a great advocate to ensure that we got this new school in Wainwright. And then the board decides what needs to be number one capital plan priority. So since I've been here for three years, Wainwright Elementary School has been our number one and it's been on our capital plan for over a decade. And the government finally approved that for us this spring. So we are very excited with that news. That's incredibly exciting. I've been to Wainwright several times and I've always driven past the school and I would definitely always think that it's in need of a facelift, a makeover, you know, give the kids a good learning opportunity uh, for, you know, different things that you could add into the school that have never been in there before, which is really exciting. Now, is there a timeline of when this project will be complete? I know that it's going to take a while because you have to start straight from scratch, but do you have an estimate on when the progress will be started? 
Yeah, so our design funding, we actually start some meetings next week with the government and then we'll be able to bring back to our community some engagements on getting feedback, as you said, about what those innovative learning spaces will be like. Next year will be that design phase. And then after that, it continues to be on our capital plan priority number one to ensure that we get funding to put those shovels in the ground and start building it by the, uh, the spring of 2024. Like I said, that this is so exciting and so well needed and deserved. So I'm very excited to see the process as it goes forward over the next couple of years. But thank you so much for joining me today. And this is very exciting time for not only Wainwright, but the whole Buffalo Trails Public School Division. So thank you. Thank you very much. It is a very exciting time for Buffalo Trail and Wainwright Elementary School families. Thank yes. you. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloyd Minster. Joining us today for primetime local news is Glenn Fagnan with the Border City Connects. Thank you so much for joining us today, Glenn. Thank you for having me. Of course, really excited to have you on here. This is uh, big news. I think everybody really gets excited about this. You know, it's coming up here and we are speaking on Ribfest 2023. You bet, and this is uh, the fourth, our fourth rib fest that we that we've, we've held. Uh, of course, the first two were drive-throughs with our with the pandemic side of things, and so this is going to be our second live rib fest uh, this year. So it'll be, Perfect. we're looking forward to it. Yeah. two weeks away. And that was my first question, even just asking what annual year this is, and the fact that it's the fourth one and it's going to be in person again. So how was that support last year after kind of transitioning in from the drive through to in person? Yeah, it's a good question. There was a lot of people that really liked the drive through. And I think we kind of catered to some of the some of the older uh, community members that just like sitting in their car and going through and you know, it worked out real well for them. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, it's a little bit different uh, when you when it is a uh, when it is uh, alive. Uh, but of course, that's how they've been operating for the last 50 years is uh, having them live. So it'll just take a little bit of getting used to we had a great turnout last year the rivers were very happy everybody was happy so that's uh, that's the main thing we want people to get out have some fun and enjoy some enjoy some barbecue oh it sounds like it's going to be delicious i know it's always a great time i love checking out rib fest now for compared to last year of course you know it's going to be in person once again for this <coughs> year is there going to be any changes i guess for this year that's kind of compared to last year well there's the the major changes we've changed venues and uh, so we've hooked up with the uh, with the just cruising uh, so they're going to be having their car show down at the Service Sports Center on Saturday. So we're going to be down at the Service Sports Center this year and we'll be there Friday, Saturday and Sunday and all day Saturday, of course, with the, the just cruising. So it's kind of a nice little combination to get the two of us together down there and to kind of do a little bit of a joint effort. Uh, the other major change that we've had is we've kind of teamed up with, we have teamed up with the Kinsman, the Lloydminster Kinsman Club. And so they're going to be operating the beer gardens that are going to be running all day. And so, uh, yeah, you can come and grab yourself some some barbecue, go sit in the, sit in the, uh, into the, in the beer gardens yeah. and enjoy a cool one and uh, we'll be having local bands that are going to be playing all during the day and then we've got a, a cabaret at night. And how was the process of setting all this up for this year's event? Yeah it's, it takes uh, takes a little bit of time a little bit of coordination there's no question like that and with all the licensing yeah. and and dealing with things but it's uh, you know we were ahead of the game and uh, it's a good bunch working with the Kinsmen. They've been around for a long time and we've got a lot of experienced volunteers and people within ours. So yeah, it went pretty, went pretty smooth. No major hiccups yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> knock on wood, knock on wood. You bet. We won't bring it up again. <laughs> <laughs> now with like seeing that strong support through the drive throughs and then of course transitioning into in-person, you know, seeing that s good strong support from residents in the community. You kind of think you're going to be seeing that for this year once again? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think everybody, you know, we're just starting to get into the groove there. Uh, we, you know, it's a tradition now on the Father's Day and that's what we're trying to do is we've held it. This is the fourth Father's Day. And so ideally what we'd like to have is when you think Father's Day, you think Border City Connects and, and Rib Fest. And so that's, uh, you know, we're certainly encouraging families to take dad out and, you know, over the weekend at some time. And if you're heading out to the lake, stop by first and grab, uh, grab some ribs. So yeah, it's, uh, we've, we've always, this community is amazing and we've always had, you know, just great support with that. Uh, and we've also, another change that we've got as well is we do have Border City Paws, the former SPCA. Uh, they're gonna be joining us. They're gonna be doing their 50-50 draw. So all the proceeds uh, that they make there will go towards 
go towards their organization. So yeah, it's nice that we're working with, you know, three other organizations within the community and kind of uh, sharing the wealth. And yeah, yeah, it sounds like there is like a lot of businesses in the community that are going to be a part of this one for this year. And it sounds like it's going to be everyone's going to be happy. You bet. We've that got, awesome. uh, the, you know, we've got our, our title sponsor that's been with us from the beginning. Uh, Southern Spur is, is in there again as our title. And we've got, you know, all the sponsors that we've had over the years have all come back in and we've got some new ones. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're really excited on, on that support side of things as well. Oh, awesome. Now, for people wanting to find some more information for this event and whatnot, where can they go online? Just to go on to bordercityconnects.com uh, mm -hmm. and all that information is being upgraded here just uh, in the la over the next couple of days. So all the, all the fresh information will be up. And so, yeah, it's, it's all there. It's all very simple. Uh, the three days we're open uh, from 11 till 9, both uh, uh, Friday and Saturday and then Sunday 11 till 7. Perfect, perfect. Is yes. there anything else you want to add, Glenn, that I may have missed out on? For no, I don't think so. You did a, a great job. We're, we're all excited. And uh, we always, as, uh, as always, St uh, Stingray is part of, the, part of the sponsorship as well. And we appreciate their support and we appreciate your exposure to us as well, Shelby. So thank you very much. Oh, of course. You got to get the word out on Rib Fest. No one can miss out on Rib Fest. <laughs> We're really excited. So once again, thank you for joining us today, Glenn. Thank you. Heading off with another quick look at your seven day forecast. We will be looking at some precipitation tomorrow, hopefully for our Friday at 23. So another warm day, but hopefully we will get some wet conditions that will continue on into our weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Expect around 80% chance, bit of a sunnier day on Sunday and slightly warmer at 25. Then we should see some of that precipitation continue on into next week, starting off on Monday at 27. So we'll be seeing the warmest temperatures next week and hopefully get some more precipitation and help with those dry conditions because as we continue on through next week, we will be looking at a warm day Tuesday with a sunnier day at 22, then almost reaching that 30 degree mark next Wednesday and Thursday with a lot more sunnier skies expected next week. And that's all the time we have for you on Primetime Local News. Thanks for watching and have a great night.